Okay, hello everybody and uh, welcome to um, today's uh, live webinar. So my name is uh, Tom Sternad and uh, I want to welcome everyone uh, for joining us uh, here today. So this is the uh, portable music recording uh, session and uh, we're going to look at how to set up uh, some tools and techniques of setting up portable studio recording solutions. And uh, part of it too is we're going to examine how, uh, you know, what we can do in terms of uh, using some of the equipment that's available through the creator space um, and also equipment that's available at the Blue Mountains Public Library and other equipment that will be available in the um, uh, Wasaga Beach Public Library. So definitely want to uh, thank uh, all of our uh, partners in this. So the Blue Mountains Public Library, the Collingwood Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library, and the Canada Council for the Arts. And um, um, yeah, so thanks, thanks for joining us. So my name is Tom Sternad. I'm the lead digital artist, and I'll take you through some of these, uh, these concepts today. So uh, let's, uh, let's get started. Here we go. So we're going to look at uh, sound recording, uh, like mic and line inputs, uh, portable sound recording studio overview, some of the direct sound recording uh, things that we can do with an iPad as well, and uh, recording um, uh, using some of the different techniques and things and, um, and uh, environments and things like that. So uh, let's have a look right here. So sound recording, uh, the mic or line input. Uh, so most devices usually have either a, a mic or uh, mic slash microphone input or line input. This can get confusing because you'll always see this thing that says like mic line. So I just want to get through that quickly and just understand what the differences are. So really mic is referring to microphone. So anything that has to do with, um, um, you know, with, with uh, an actual uh, microphone. And, you know, what does that um, exactly mean, right? So the, um, the, uh, the mic is uh, a lower energy level, um, you know, uh, sound wave um, source, right? So the line level is, is more of the electronically or digitally created and it's, and it's louder as a result, right? So really big important difference between the two. So always think of mic inputs are literally from microphones, but you know, the, uh, whereas the, the line level is electronically or digitally created, right? So it's louder um, as a result, right? So um, really think the mic inputs are essentially for microphones, right? And then the line input is for things like instruments, electronic devices. One good example of that I think really helps to explain the difference between the two is that, you know, the, the microphone um, is, you know, like a microphone is like on your phone or an iPad, um, whereas the line levels like the headphone jack. So when you're listening to things with headphones, um, that's what it ends up being. It's like that, um, you know, the, the what you hear with your headphones, that same kind of idea. Right, so that's a really good example between the two. So there's like the, the microphone for mics and then there's the line level um, that's like the headphone jack or the output that's uh, the, the digitally uh, or the, you know, the, the actual sound um, wave file that's being uh, amplified, right? Whereas the microphone is just picking up our, our uh, voices. So it's a lot lower level than something that has an electronic signal versus like a um, analog or organic signal, right? So I hope that helps to explain, but we'll see a, a bit about that today, the mic and line level inputs, because those are options that we can take. Okay, so portable sound recording studio overview. What's the goal here? So we want to talk about options that we have in, um, you know, working, working with stuff. So it might, we might have some options that we want to use um, to be able to create some sort of a, a portable recording studio. So this could include laptops, iPads, portable sound recorders. And the great thing is that, again, through the Creator Space and um, Blue Mountains Public Library and shortly Wasaga Beach Public Library, uh, there will be some equipment, or there is some equipment, such as portable sound recorders that we'll look at today. Um, things like iPads you may have, those are ready, so that's great. Something that you can already um, have access to and use. So that's a really good uh, tool to use. And, um, you know, that, then the other thing is using laptops, and that's kind of what we'll finish off. So I want to take us through, hey, I want to use an iPad, how do we set something up for that? I want to use a sound recorder, maybe you, you want to get one or you want to take one out from one of the libraries. 
um, or you want to uh, set up your laptop to do that. So I just want to take us through what that means. And the, the great thing is that essentially then we can have a, a little mini sound recording studio in our homes. Um, so that can be, you know, home or garage. Um, one of the software pieces we'll look at is called GarageBand on the iPad. So literally, you know, it's a typical place. Garage is pretty good uh, to use as a recording area. You can kind of customize it, fit in some instruments and be louder and not uh, affect the whole household. So that kind of combo is great. Now, each device requires something called an I.O. device. And uh, this is a term that we'll hear a lot about. And what does that really mean? So I wanted to explain it here. So it's an input-output device. So that, what that allows us to do is to put an input, such as a mic or a line, and then output it through a monitor, like speakers or headphones. So that I.O. device can be an internal microphone. So literally, that can be like using your iPad, and it has a microphone built into it that's at the top of the camera. Um, or it can be like an add-on device, little boxes and units that we can add to, um, to make it work. All right, so you know, that's, that's the whole idea. And I'll look at, we'll look at some of these, what these mean and what they look like. So um, again, you can get pretty good sound recording done with, a, with just this you know, simple tool, just such as your iPad. You can use one of the portable sound recorders and use the internal microphones as well. Or if you want to use external sources, external microphones or instruments, you need one of these I.O. devices beyond what just your laptop, iPad, um, or technically even your phone might have, right? So you need something to be able to input to and then output. Generally, a headphone jack could be your output. So just being able to listen to your, the, what you're recording on headphones is a great way to have an output. Um, and then there's also uh, recorders that have a complete input panel into them. So we'll look at these portable sound recorders like the Zoom H4n and what that means to put mic and line level uh, inputs to it. Okay, so moving on. So direct sound recording with an iPad. So the great thing about the iPads are that they do have a built-in microphone. So they're just like your phone and they'll have a, a little microphone on the back um, just around where the camera is. So it's just trying to record the, uh, the, this voice as you talk, right? So that's the, that's the idea, and just getting regular audio from, from the video. But they're pretty small, um, and they're not necessarily too directional, meaning that they'll take sound from kind of all over the place. Um, they do use some noise filtering to try and help with that, but essentially it could be really noisy to try and use an iPad to get sound in, a, in an open public space. But that can still work quite well if you have a quiet room if you set up, if you have like a large closet or something where you can really control your sound, you can have a pretty optimum sound place that can help work. All right, so um, the microphone is directly above the camera. It's designed to capture audio from a distance. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it is designed to do that, but it, it might not always be optimum, right? So we want to always consider that. So GarageBand, recording vocals and instruments. So you can, you can use... Um, there's electronic ways, but we're, today what we're looking at is how do we record stuff like a recording studio. I'm not really talking about electronic music production, which is a little bit different, like with MIDI and keyboards and things. Um, but, you know, how do you record some vocals, let's say, in a guitar? You know, how would we do that? So in GarageBand, you could do that with, that, uh, with an iPad, for example, and use the microphones that are... Um, on, on the iPad, or we can add a little I.O. device, right? So let's, let's explore what this looks like. So I'm just going to go over to, let me just get my iPad running here. Um, and what I'm going to do is, okay, so let's look at a couple ways we can do this. So first I'm going to just, let me just plug in my iPad and get a monitor feed for that. A little bit complicated here today just with these demos. Okay, so let's see. Hopefully that will work out. Uh, do, do. Okay, so here we go. So what I've done is, let me just go to this camera. So I have, I have this, uh, the iPad set up here. Um, then we see this condenser microphone, and we're going to get to this because eventually we'll be able to, to set up uh, this microphone to go into an iPad, into a sound recorder, and we're going to look at a little I.O. device that can go into a laptop. So we'll kind of look at these, these options of how we can set up a portable recording studio. So one of our most simplest ways is to use some like GarageBand, launch the app, and then we can go right into you know, what, what this does. So lead vocals, you can see right now on the screen 
um, screen left, it says in, input, right? And it's just using the microphone from the iPad. So there's no other type of input. So I'm just using that. And then my output is on the right and that lets me hear back what I've recorded. So to record, let me just uh, record a little bit here. So I'm gonna hit record here on the top. This is a test, vocal test. Test, test, check, one, two, three, check, one, two, three. Okay, then I'm gonna hit stop. All right, and now we'll actually be able to, to play this back. Let me just turn the audio on here. Okay, let's listen to this. This is a test, vocal test. Test, test, check, one, two, three, check, one, two, three. Okay, so great. So that you can hear, I recorded the voice, I was able to play it back. So you can hear, you know, we get into a little bit of room noise and, uh, you know, you, you can, uh, it might even be doubling up a little bit from the inputs of, of my mics, how I have them set up here. Um, but essentially, you know, it's not, it's not the cleanest sounding um, production. So what I can do instead is, now I'm gonna just flip this over to this other camera here. So what I can do instead is, um, let me go to this overhead here. So um, I'm gonna unplug my monitor here. So instead of um, using uh, the, uh, the speaker that's just here, I can get something like this box. It's a Focusrite uh, Track 1, it's called. Different types of boxes, but you can see it's a tiny little box. Okay, and what do we have? We have the ability to put a microphone into it. So this allows me then to take a microphone and plug it right into GarageBand. So, and it's designed to work with an iPad. So I can simply plug in this device right into here. And then what I'm gonna do is you can see now it has the, it's on and I can play with gain and stuff. And now you can, you can see it's no longer the iPad, but it's technically my uh, condenser microphone here that's plugged in with this XLR cable. So an XLR cable is basically a grounded cable that most microphones will use. And that brings the signal over and you can see how this top is um, kind of lighting up and it's flashing as the levels go. The other thing that I've had to uh, added here is this little box gives me what's called the um, 48 volt phantom power. And that's what this red box is here. And what that little red indicator is, is that it's saying, hey, I'm actually adding some power to the microphone to get it to uh, capture the signal and bring it back, right? So these kinds of microphones for vocals, oftentimes you might need that. That's called phantom power. So it's 40 volts of power going to the microphone. Some mics don't need it. Usually, um, um, you know, kind of like the handheld uh, dynamic mics um, that you kind of see more interviews and things um, won't need that. Those are just direct plugins, but these kind of condenser mics that I'm using will need it. So let's just flip over. So now here's the setup. So I got this, this condenser microphone on a stand. So this is a MXL, I think it's a 990 or something. Um, it's one of those MXL condenser mics. Now this one is a, a mic that you can actually take out from the Blue Mountains Public Library and it will be in the Wasaga Beach Public Library as well. So this is one of the sound items that you can take out. Um, and then you can uh, you know, plug it into the sound recorder, which we'll get into next. Or you know, if you really wanna set something up at home, like permanently, you can get some sort of a little IO device like this one. Um, tons of manufacturers, you can spend 30 bucks, you know, 40 bucks, not really expensive. Um, and then it just plugs into an iPad with a cable with, and the microphone's plugged in. So it's a super easy way to get recording pretty professionally. And this then allows you to put an input that is a mic or a line, right? Just like we talked about. So the microphone input, or it could be a line input for, let's say an electric guitar or um, a keyboard or off an amp. Um, Right, so to a, a few ways that you can hook things up. So now I'm gonna use the condenser microphone. Um, we're gonna do a little sample here. I'm just gonna record this again. Um, I'm just gonna set up my levels here. Check, 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 one, two, check. Okay, it's gonna bring it down a little bit. It's getting, now you can see what's happening. It's gone red and that's telling me I'm peaking. Gonna bring this down a little bit here. 
check one, two, check, check, check. And you can see how it's flashing green. So that means the levels are good. So once again in uh, GarageBand, I'm just gonna hit the record here. Check, check, check one, two. This is a microphone check, 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 check one, two. Okay, beautiful. So um, that's what we recorded. Now, in terms of playing it back, uh, let me just switch over. So I'm just gonna unplug this, get my, like I said, it's a little bit trickier today. Just trying to demo with a few methods here. And get my uh, iPad hooked up here. So we should be able to play it back. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna turn that on, flip right over here. And now we're gonna play back what I did with the condenser microphone. Check, check, check one, two. This is a microphone check, 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 check one, two. Right, so it's a lot um, quieter and um, you know, the condenser microphone doesn't have all that room noise. So you can see how quickly just by having a, uh, you know, an in input output device, we can, we can essentially bring, um, you know, a better sounding recording with something as simple as this tiny little box with the XLR using this condenser mic into the iPad. Okay, so that's one. Now, let's move on to the next area. So that's the garage band using some sort of, so we use an input output device. Uh, there's one in the picture here, Focusrite, tons of different models you can spend. I think I've seen them as low as $20 all the way to you know, $200. And the iPad's great because this needs a little, uh, I think it's a USB type B, I think it is, or you know, the iPad little pluggy thing. Um, so it's, you're basically getting into through the, where you use your power for the iPad, you're plugging in the, uh, like an input output into that power space. That's how it works with iPads, for example. The same kind of box could be used as a, in a, you know, USB 3 or USB-C cable on a laptop and it could go that way as well. So that it, you can get kind of these uh, base model uh, IO devices and then add microphones like we just did and uh, or instruments, right? So a few ways to do it. So that's, that was really cool. So that's a great way to start a recording studio with, you know, you can have, if you already have an iPad, you can spend a little bit of money or, um, and then come and access some of our equipment for getting uh, microphones from the libraries. Um, and that would be a, a great way to get started doing some vocals, demos, uh, figuring out what, you know, what kind of tracks you want to do and just experimenting with things. And it could just be vocals only. Maybe you want to, uh, this can also be applied for podcasts. So we're not just talking about music. We're talking about recording studio for voiceovers, podcasts, um, music, um, you know, animated films. You want like character recording. So anything kind of vocal, vocal wise. Okay, so the next one is the beautiful Zoom H4n sound recorder. So this portable sound recording device is a four channel recorder. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it allows you to then do um, uh, an internal stereo microphone on the top. And then you also have inputs for a mic or line input on the bottom. And again, these units, uh, we have an H4n at the Blue Bounds Public Library and we will have one at the uh, Wasaga Beach Public Library and we will also have one eventually at the Collingwood Public Library. So all, all the libraries will have this equipment available uh, in the coming months um, with Blue Mounds already has it. So if, you, if you're a Blue Mounds uh, Public Library card holder, um, you can access that and take it out. Uh, it's one week rental. So it's a great way. What I'm gonna show today, you can go and get this equipment from them and uh, through our Creator Space program. So the recorder allows you to, you can correct and adjust levels and you can, you know, and because it's multi-input, so there's two tracks you can, you can have um, you know, different uh, approaches to it. So they have the uh, internal and the external. Um, I just see a question here, any Android apps similar to GarageBand? Um, there is, I believe the Android phones and like Chromebooks come with something that's like GarageBand. Um, I don't have an exact name of it, but there's definitely, um, you know, GarageBand's one example. There's probably, a few dozen apps that I can think of already that would be free for Apple uh, iOS. So there's got to be the same amount for Android. Um, so it's just a matter of finding any kind of um, music recording software. And we'll look at, I'll, I'll present some of the ones that are available on, um, uh, on uh, laptops as well. 
and I'm seeing an error here on my one program here. Okay, so let's just try this again. Um, so the uh, the H4N, let's go right to this. So I have, here is the H4N. So this recorder is really cool. And um, so what we have is we have the two uh, internal microphones right here. And then we have, let me just get this, activate. Okay, and uh, so we have the uh, internal microphones here. Then we have the um, what's called the XLR and TRS. So that's like a line level quarter inch. And I'll show you what the difference is between the two plugs. So you have channel one, channel two, right? And then, so we have, you know, these two. So it's a one, two, three, four. And on the back, what's cool is there, there's a little external uh, microphone input. So you can add uh, like a, put another microphone in there. So that, that's really a cool way to, to do that, right? So um, it's a pretty handy little tool. Um, we just hit, uh, I turned this guy on right over here. There's a little power um, button. You can, we have a whole demo video. So if you go to tbmcs.ca, you can see uh, our YouTube channel and we have a whole equipment breakdown of how the Zoom H4N works. Um, and we're going to be doing some more uh, work series on these as well uh, as we add them to all the libraries. Um, so it's pretty tiny. You can see it's just in, in, in my hand. This could be recording right there. So unlike an iPad microphone, these are really high quality internal microphones. Um, I think they're, they're amazing for recording um, live concerts. Uh, they have a really great range of, of recording. So I think they're a, quite a powerful microphone versus the ones like on an iPad that's not so great. Um, so, you know, that's, it's a really cool tool that you can, you can actually do that. So then how do we do this? So what, instead of, so just like I had this, the XLR cable in this little box for the iPad, I am going to, let me just put this box over here. Lots of stuff here today. So, and um, what I want to do is put the XLR cable. So this is the XLR cable. And you can see it's three prongs. So what that does is it gives us the power and the third prong is a ground. So that makes sure there isn't any hum if we're recording uh, sound and you know from electrical signals or any kind of noise. Um, and then I just click it in here, right? So now what I've done is I've put the condenser microphone into the zoom, right? And this is again, um, we need to go to uh, there's a phantom power setting. I'm just going to get in here a little bit. Let me just zoom in a little bit closer. There we go. Okay. Um, so there's a little, there's a phantom power setting. And how we get to that is there's a menu button right here. I'm going to hit menu. Goes to the top here. And then there's a little wheel on the side here. This little wheel. And this we can spin. And what I can do is go to record, and then I push that wheel in, and it comes into here. Um, this is gonna, this thing's gonna give me the format, so I wanted to just show that quickly. So 48 kilohertz, 24 bit. Um, that's what I like, I like to use for sound recording, just because it's a great uh, sample. So 40,000 samples per second, 24 bit depth. So bit depth is kind of like color amount. Let's say if there's a color, if you're thinking of like a monitor, and then 48,000 samples. So each time I say a word, it's sampled 48,000 times to create um, what I'm saying and make it sound really good. So that's kind of the idea there. So now what I'm going to do is go to input, the input thing right there. I'm going to hit input. Okay, I'm just going to go through, there's a bunch of settings here. And here's phantom. So it says plus 48 volts. So that's what I need to have turned on so that this line is going to get my uh, condenser microphone and feed it some power. So that's how we can turn it on or off. We just go in here and if I hit the little wheel, right, I can go off. I can go uh, 40 volts or 28 volts. So we're usually they're, they're 40 volts. So I'm going to hit that and you can see now it's engaged. I'm going to hit menu twice, get out of this. And now what I have is I have, um, I've chosen here there's the microphone there's a that triggers the top here the top mics and then there's 
channel one and two that it will trigger my condenser microphone. So I've engaged that. And then to start recording, I hit record. And now you can see it starts to have levels. And these levels, we wanna basically keep, zero is total distortion in digital audio. So we wanna always keep it um, you know, quite under, about minus 12 peaks or so. Uh, maybe minus six if it's a little bit more of a louder dynamic speaking person. Um, so now you can see the level. So check, check, check one, two. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. It's confusing with these, with what I'm seeing the camera here. Um, okay, so check, check, check one, two. So you can see the level going up, right? So that's, that's not looking bad. And then when I'm ready to actually record, this is on standby. So you can see it's just flashing like a pause. Then I hit it again to actually record. So I'm gonna hit record. So you can see now it's recording and the numbers are moving. Right? And then I'm just going to go to this angle here so you can see. So now I'm going to go check, one, two, check, 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 one, two, check, check. This is a recording. Okay, and then when I'm done, I will hit stop and everything turns off. Right, so then we know we're, we're finished recording and that's it. Now to adjust the levels, what you do is you, if, I, if I'm using uh, channel one here, I'll hit that. And then the input level, and there's just a little thing on the side here. And it says, let me get this a bit closer. See right there, it says record level, right? And it's a plus minus. So then I can just hit that other plus or minus to go up or down with the recording level. Sorry, I'm gonna select, select one, and then I can basically go down. It's gonna be like, you know, going up or down. And I think right now it's at 22. I know it's a little bit uh, blown out there in the camera. Um, so that's basically what's happening. So it just, you know, goes up or down and uh, goes from there. So that's really all there is to the Zoom. Um, choosing whether you want the top mic, you can input. So I've put in a microphone here. We can also put in a, a, like a, a, a line cable. What does a line cable look like? So how do we set that up? So what we're doing with that is we're basically using these um, these uh, quarter inch cables that look like this. And again, let me just get the focus on this. Right. So, you know, we've probably seen these before. They're like big headphone jacks. Uh, so they're quarter inch, they're called because they're quarter inch uh, width um, or diameter. And this is a balanced one and it's because it has an extra line here so these are balanced um, and this again that balance takes gets sort of hum so it's grounded and this can go out of like an amp a uh, guitar or electric, electric guitar right so patch cables they might be called different names as well um, but this is what you can bring in as a as a line so how does that work you go okay well wait a sec how does this thing work I got this thing here, right? So we got what looks like just XLR can go in there, but this is called a, a, a multi, uh, so it's XLR TRS. So this, this jack can just go in here. It can just plug in there as well. So it's kind of a universal, it can plug in, a, a one eight can plug in there as well, right? And those can just go in or out. Now the, the big difference here is with the XLR cables, you do need to push down and then pull the cable out. It's actually locked until you push a little thing that says push with your finger. And then you can actually release it and take it out. Okay, so that's, that's uh, you know, the, the main thing about this recorder. Um, like I said, we will have some more series about um, the sound recorder with some more uh, tutorials and some uh, kind of self-guided workshops that you can explore with these. Um, I should note that it's not just it's not just stuck on the recorder. How do we get stuff out? So to get stuff out, right here we have an SD card. So I just click on that SD card goes out. It's a standard SD card, so that can then just go into, um, uh, you know, like a, a computer, and then you can get the the audio files off of that. Um, okay. So that's. That's what's happening there. So that's, that's again, the Zoom H4N recorder, right? Um, 
and you can this whole webinar you can rewatch on Crowdcast. So if you need to, you know, go through it again and look at any of the steps, um, you'll be able to to see that and uh, and how that works, right? So again, we have uh, the record button. So I engage, and then it's ready to record. Stand by. Record again to actually start recording, right? And then the numbers move, and then I hit the stop button, which is this button right here. Stop and it stopped recording, okay? And then here again, I'm deciding which tracks, one, two, or the mic. So the mic is up here, or one, one and two are down here. So that's the whole um, uh, elements there. So in terms of the, um, the adjustment of the recording level, what it's doing is it's deciding what that does right here. Let's zoom in here on the, so that record level here, if I go plus minus, so what I'm doing is I'm actually, it's like a, a fader, if you will. So you're deciding whether, you know, you want how much level are you inputting of the microphone? So is it higher or you can reduce it? And that allows you to then balance out the, uh, the levels. So here in the levels, right, we want to usually, I always say, kind of think of it almost like a finger under zero, which is the total maximum of digital audio. So if you're just about a finger under that, that's in that minus 12 range. So that kind of level you want to have. So you're reducing that recording level to make sure you're not hitting zero. And what happens is if you hit zero, uh, if you hit zero, you end up getting a distorted audio signal because there's it basically what's called clipping and that will clip the audio and then uh, distort it because it can't record beyond that. So it's like the maximum digital capacity. Um, so if anyone's d done like analog recording, it's a little bit different because you can actually go loud before it's distorting, but with digital audio, that, uh, that's really crucial not to um, get into the distortion. Okay, so let's move on. Again, the Zoom H4n, there is a YouTube video um, that, that you can look at more with that uh, concept. So here, let me just, just I want to check this one technical thing here. Just want to start up our software. There we go. Pro Tools is starting. Okay, so I'm using something called Pro Tools. Um, but there's, a, I'll make a note here, there's also the ability to, let's make sure this is still working here. Yes, okay. So there's something called Thunderbolt IO devices as well. And we will, once we get into some uh, physical workshops again at the uh, Creator Space, we'll have the ability to work with these a bit more um, and I just wanted to demonstrate a smaller one that I have that's a two-channel Thunderbolt Arrow it's called from Universal Audio and the creator space at uh, Blue Bounds Public Library there's a 16-track um, portable recording studio that runs the Apollo X8 so we'll be demoing that through uh, all at all the libraries uh, um, as we go forward too with with these different uh, Thunderbolt IO devices so like the Arrow um, and we'll, we'll be doing some portable recording studio setups. But um, this Arrow, it gets a little bit more expensive. I think it's about $650. Um, but now you're getting into Thunderbolt devices. And the beauty of that is that um, technically it could uh, help provide, um, you know, help pro provide what... Uh, uh, is a called a zero latency or low latency. So some of the other devices, there might be a little bit of a delay as you're recording. So let's say you're recording and you're listening to the your guitar. It might be a little bit late by the time you hear it back in your headphones. So that's called latency in sound recording. So the Thunderbolt type devices, they have zero latency. So you can't hear that anything's being delayed. And that's can be really important if you're recording, you know, guitar and vocals, and you want to hear um, what you're doing, right? So, so that's um, you know that that could be crucial to to what you're doing. Um, so, you know, th that's the beauty of the, these Thunderbolt devices is that they can give us a little bit more of uh, of that. And there we go, that's working. Um, so, you know, so what what what's great about that is that um, we can we can then use these types of devices um, and plug it into what's called a digital audio workstation. So 
I'm trying to give kind of a, a, a level here. Of like, so, you know, you can start with the iPad, get some things input into that, use just the microphone, get like a device, really cost effective, spend, you know, 20, 30 bucks if you want, um, and, and kind of work your way up. That can get you some recording. Then you can use something like the Zoom H4n for, uh, it's a whole kind of all in one. It's a little bit different because it's handheld recording. It's basically a computer and a IO device all in one. So it's really convenient, super convenient. You could be doing this, you know, you're at a cottage or you're, uh, you know, in your backyard and you want to record a demo of, uh, you know, let's say guitar and vocals, um, or just maybe some vocals, put some lyrics down of a song or record a voiceover. Um, so that's kind of all in one. And now what we're doing is we're getting into this next thing where now we're using like an input output device, some sort of a laptop, desktop, and a digital audio workstation software. And software is great because that allows us to, um, to then have you know higher levels of manipulation, um, processing, mastering, equalization, like kind of the works. So Pro Tools is a great kind of standard out there for music and post production and film. And um, Pro Tools first is a free software, so it's kind of a, a you know kind of base model of Pro Tools. So it's totally free. And if you're using something like these universal audio uh, I.O. devices, they have a free software called Luna. Um, and I'm just going to be testing that out and we'll, we'll be posting some more information on that just to look at, you know, how the Luna works and if it needs to use one of their devices specifically. But, um, you know, we want to be able to, to kind of explore that and see where, uh, how that can be approached as well. Um, so again, as it says here in the, in the benefit is that you you're basically connecting directly to a laptop. So you get zero or no latency, uh, which is really, really a cool thing. So, you know, that's, uh, that's a nice way that, uh, that that can work. So I'm going to, you know, we'll, we'll have, I have pro tools up and I'm not going to get really into the software, um, specifically, but what I want to look at is just, you know, these kind of input output devices on the Thunderbolt side and what that means. Again, pretty portable, um, but what's cool is then you can actually start monitoring. So I'm going to try to hook up the monitor so we can hear it as well. Um, so let me just see what that does. Um, I've tested it. It seemed to work, but I'm just worried we might have a kind of a double feedback loop of some sort. So let me know if there's anything, if it gets too loud. Check. Check, 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 check. So now we should be able to check, 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 check. So we're just getting a kind of a monitor uh, input of this. Uh, so now I'm going to just go here. Let me just turn this off. I don't want to double up the sound. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So what does this mean? So what I have here, so I have kind of the iPad here, right? Condenser microphone, and we've managed to hook this up to all of them. So I, I'm hoping that, you know, by the end of this, that we'll get a great understanding of how, you know, it doesn't really matter if we have, uh, you know, $20,000 computer systems, we can be using a, you know, $400 iPad, we can be using a, a Zoom H4n, that's, I think it's about 450 or so, so same kind of price range. Um, and then we can be using, you know, something like this universal arrow. Uh, I.O. device and a laptop, right? And then we're just, you know, we're kind of building on things. But the main thing is that we can get, you know, take out one of these microphones from, from one of our libraries, um, hook it up and record great vocals in, you know, anything as simple as an iPad or the Zoom, or, you know, if you building something up this way. So there's kind of stepping blocks of what it can do, but all of them offer quite good sound recording um, so the, the goal really here is how can we use what we already have? How can we use what's available at our libraries and, you know, build these kinds of systems together for, uh, for sound recording. Okay. So, um, let's, let's have a look at that. So let me just get to this overhead camera here and, and I just zoom into, let me zoom out a touch and there's the focus on that. Okay. So this is, this is the arrow right here, right? So, um, Really, you know, just kind of, you know, grab visually showing us what's happening. You can see the uh, levels are going here. Um, and what I've done here, there's a 48 volt. And I think I can lift this up a little bit. Get this a little bit closer. 
just so we can kind of focus into it here. So there's a few buttons here. So 48 volt is engaged and I've uh, chosen mic. So this thing can be either a mic or a line input as well, right? So just kind of like the zoom, we have these back inputs here, just like the zoom has on the bottom here, right? So this has them right here, right? And this, this device has them back here. So not that different than the zoom, um, but what this does is it has, you know, kind of a higher end uh, preamp. So the preamp helps get you, um, you know, cleaner vocals, and that's kind of the idea. So you're just trying to in increase your quality of uh, what you can do with the recording. Um, and then um, uh, essentially I can just, you know, bring the levels up. So just like now you get this kind of fancy knob, so I can bring my levels up or down. I can lower them and you can see how the levels are going lower and lower right here, right? So watch as I raise it. Check, 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 right? So I'm not talking louder, but I'm getting louder levels as we go, right? So again, I have my condenser microphone hooked up right into here, into this this arrow. And then the arrow is going over here through the Thunderbolt or USB-C cable into the laptop and it's being fed right into Pro Tools, right? So you can kind of see here on the screen. So we got this, we got the condenser mic going into this, and from here we're going into Pro Tools. So you can see it starts to get a little bit bigger in what we're doing, but just as we had the condenser and just the zoom, right? Now we're putting it into this kind of a device and going there, or we had technically that condenser mic right into the iPad, and we're able to record that way, right? So really interesting how we can do both. <coughs> Excuse me. So, so you can see right away from these, these, uh, you know, how can we set up these, these, uh, the portable recording studio, um, and it, and it works quite nicely. So let let me uh, do a little bit of a demo here. So I'm gonna just hit, um, I'm gonna engage the recording function here in Pro Tools, and. Check 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 microphone check. Check one, two, microphone check, 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 check. So what we've done is uh, um, recorded directly, again, from this condenser. It's gone into here, it's on uh, Pro Tools right here. And then we're able to monitor back. So technically I can hear it with the headphones um, and uh, I don't have the um, adapter out here so I can get it back to you guys. but. So same idea, that clean condenser recording like we did with the iPad. Um, we're getting a little bit of a better preamp. So just in terms of like quality, um, you know, that kind of comes into play. Um, you know, kind of the easier knob to use. Uh, but all of this is taking, you know, tens of thousands of dollars of recording studio. And now you can really be creative and think about, okay, what kind of, uh, you know, what do you want to tell in your music? What do you want to explore? You can experiment. Um, so, you know, we really want to help everyone uh, explore things like the H4N. Um, why not use GarageBand or other kind of free apps on, on uh, you know, on uh, tablets? And then through that, you can, you know, really experiment, explore, and you're not spending hundreds of dollars in a recording studio when you can use equipment that you already have. Um, so the main thing, again, to remember is the... Um, uh, you know, having some sort of a microphone so you can use the iPad's existing microphone to get some demos going. You can input output with some sort of a box device, right? So we have this, uh, this focus right track one that just goes into the iPad. Microphone goes in there, right? And again, you can take out some of these microphones from, uh, from our library partners. And this goes into the iPad. Um, and then voila, we have our input output. Then we have the Zoom H4n, um, total essentially computer, sound recorder, input output device, all built in one. Um, you can just use the microphones that are here. So you can just be, you know, have them near you. Really good sounding microphones. So those are great for the internal side, better than the iPads internal. And then we have something like the Universal Audio um, Aero. So two track with a little bit more fancier, some preamp stuff, trying to get cleaner sound. Uh, zero latency, so it could be better from there. So I hope that helps to explain something. So again, microphone levels, literally microphones. My headphones, you know, so when you have headphones and they're plugged into something, so I have them here for monitoring, 
that headphone jack is that line level, right? So that helps to explain what the line level is versus the microphone level. So line levels are coming out of some sort of a, um, uh, amplifier. So it's a headphone amplifier, speakers, uh, uh, amplifier, electric guitar, keyboards, all those are line levels, right? That already have power going into the signal. Um, then we talked about the phantom power, so 48 volt for uh, microphones that need that. So through in the H, uh, H4N, the Zoom menu, you go to uh, input, you can turn on phantom power. And then um, uh, beyond that, the XLR cable that you use for the microphone, record and explore and figure out you know, different uh, ways you can set up your studio um, with either what you have or, or take some of, uh, you know, use some of these tools that we have made available in our community to, um, to do some of these uh, explorations um, at your own home portable studio. Now, let's just look at if there's, a, check out if there's any questions. Um, so now's a great time if you have any questions. I'm gonna look through here. Okay. Okay, so one question here. On the Zoom H4n, uh, is the one two link, the internal microphone or the external microphone? So the one two are for the external input. So there's channels one and two. And the top button says mic, and that is for the uh, internal microphones. So the one and two are referring to external on the H4n. Um, so line inputs, uh, here's another question. Do line inputs require phantom power? No, so line inputs are already powered and they're high level. Uh, so the, they're coming out with powered uh, audio information, uh, the signal going into the recorder. So they don't need that at all. Um, so it's just the microphones. So really primarily things like this MXL um, 990 that requires um, that, you know, some sort of power going into it. So they're pretty fragile. They're called like a large diaphragm um, condenser microphone. So it needs uh, some sort of power to, to help it get going beyond just our uh, vocals because we don't have that much amplitude. You know, you know, if we scream, sure, but it's not the same thing as an electric signal that's giving a, a higher um, amount of electrical energy uh, out in the signal. So that's, uh, that's always a, a, something to remember. Um, so yeah, I think that's great. So um, yeah, I think that's that's it. That uh, all all I've got for uh, this evening. Um, again, like I said, we're gonna have a bunch of things on the Zoom H4n. Um, some more sound recording tips. We want to look at um, we're gonna look at some design aspects too. Uh, thinking you know creatively, coming up with uh, music design, uh, mixed media things. So you know tonight might apply a little bit more to like music sound recording. Yeah, it could be for voiceovers, podcasts, right? So try to use this information in any way that it can help you. Um, and please uh, feel free to access the equipment that's available. So once again, Blue Mountains Public Library has the Zoom H4N available. If you're a member there, um, you have access to it. Um, and uh, if you, uh, Wasaga Beach Public Library, we will have uh, this equipment coming soon. And same with Collingwood Public Library. So stay tuned for those announcements, uh, but this will kind of get you uh, starting to think about maybe what kind of sound recording projects you may wish to do. And in the meantime, if you have a, a, an iPad, you know, feel free to start recording with that, maybe even putting some of the demos down before you get into more detailed recording uh, later on. So um, yeah, thanks again, thanks for joining us and uh, have a great uh, rest of the evening. Take care everyone.